Coming up on Varsity Sports, the championships keep rolling in. We've got repeats, first-time champs, and even some surprises. And we'll introduce you to Cole Benson. Many people don't know what he's had to go through to become one of the best players in the state of South Dakota. We'll tell you about his journey to the top. Also, we'll preview the last four state tournaments of the seasons. Will there be any upsets and which players are going to break out? We've got some answers. All that plus Jay will make a last ditch effort to catch me in the pick'em game. We've got that all coming up on Varsity Sports. And hello and welcome to Varsity Sports alongside Jason and Dara, I am Jay Elson. Well, this week we've got five championship highlights to show you and four more classes to preview. And we're going to get right into it right now, starting with the North Dakota Class A girls. Yeah, Fargo Shanley entered the tournament as the defending champs. They had a 40-game winning streak coming into the tournament, and they're looking to become just the seventh team in Class A to stay undefeated for an entire season. As, as you see in the bracket, they didn't have much trouble getting their way to the championship game facing a Bismarck Century team that's familiar to championships as well, uh, sweeping through the bottom half of the bracket. And, uh, you know, a couple upsets, Turtle Mountain making it to the semifinals and Grand Forks Red River finding their way, but we found the two best teams on Saturday night. Yeah, so it was a defensive battle in the first half as Shanley goes for their 43rd straight victory. Uh, Deacons get out and run transition early here with Sarah Jacobson. They love to run the transition, and Sarah Jacobson does such a nice job at it, just running the team flawlessly. Summer Bo Buckles for the lay-in. She had four points on the night. Sedfrey rallied back, though. Jordan Josart, one of the top players in the state, struggled from the field in the first half, but knocks down the pull-up jumper to tie things up. Patriots shot just 17% for the half. Yeah, that was a clutch uh, shot by Josart to get him back on track. Deacon's a strong finish. Lauren Rotunda finds herself open at the baseline, knocks down that jumper. She had nine first half points. Then it's Jacobson's turn. She Deep. steps back and she can hit a shot anywhere in the gym. Her favorite one right there, look at that. Steps back to hit the 18 footer. Her and Lauren Rotunda, two of the best juniors in the state. Watch out, they're gonna be good once again next year. 22-15, Shanley at the ba break. Page, Pats fans looking to get their team back into it. Courtney Selensky, great look inside to Katie Schur for two of her six points. And there were a few times in this game where Sh Shanley really could have blown out Century, but they played tough and stayed in this game. Beth Muggerud banks it, her only basket of the game. Patriots back within four, it's 27-23 at this point, but Shanley Always had an answer. Buckle stripped inside, ends up in the hands of Olivia Frazy. And she goes back inside to Buckles for that bucket. Then it's Jacobson, one of her three three-pointers to give the Deacons a 14-point lead. She had a game high 22 on the night to go along with six rebounds. And the Deacons are back-to-back -back state champions. 46-38 the final. They finish off a perfect season. Those coaches that have had the opportunity, or those teams that have won two, always know that second one's a tough one. Century was a great battle. It was back and forth the whole time, but we knew that persistence and you know, keep looking at the shots that we need, it would get us there. It's been an unbelievable season. Very blessed to be able to play with these group of girls and be able to be coached by the great coaching staff we have. And with that, now we move into the boys' tournament. The, the Super A on the boys' side uh, going on same weekend as always. And uh, as you look at the field here, we had two teams that really separated themselves. You and I talked uh, for much of the season, Jason. We thought Century and Minot appeared to be the two best teams coming in. And that's exactly what we got in the end. Well, they proved that the West region was a little better than the East this year. No first round upsets. And uh, the West really proved, you know, they had the two best teams in the state, like you said, and this would be the fourth meeting of the year between Century and Minot. And they were all extremely good basketball games, and let's get to the highlights on this one now. It's a rematch of the West Region Championship from last week as Minot and Century square off here, and Magi off and running early on. Ben Belinsky, the outlet, streaks down the floor, goes end-to-end -end for the lay-in. Belinsky had nine first-half points, Minot up five. Century answers Riley Henderson, High arcing three-pointer from the top of the key. He had 16 points on the night and kept the century offense afloat in the first half. Magi, though, put together a 6-0 run to end the first half. Check out the move by Dakota Hendrickson. Halverson, that is. Yeah, he is an electric player. He's a leader on the team, and uh, he's done it all season long. When they've needed a big hoop, they go to Halverson. Minot led 24-19 at the half. Century would trail by as many as 15 in the second. 
But Isaac Wallen got hot. The tough pull-up jumper for two trims the lead to nine. This is not one of their top players. The senior came off the bench and had a huge second half in this game. That after the block by Henderson, Andrew Steinwan leads the break. Can't finish at the rim, but right there, Adam Geiger for the putback and the foul. He had five points and the lead down to six. But Minot answers back after a scoring drought. Big shot for Nick Soltis here. Yeah, he is a good shooter. They've got so many guys they can go to for the Magi. The game got close. Minot extended that lead, but watch out. This game's not over quite yet. Then the senior athlete of the year, Halverson. The tough shot fading away in the lane, plus the foul. He had 15 on the night to push it back to a seven-point lead. But after Minot missed some free throws, Wallen got hot. He scored 15 points in the last three minutes of the game, including that triple. Hot is an understatement. This guy caught fire, and this is a, a guy who hasn't done that all season long. Huge night for Wallen. After a foul, Belinsky missed the first free throw. He knocks down the second to make it 61-59. Last chance for the Patriots. Wallen from 25 oh. feet for the win at the buzzer. Just a little long, and Minot hangs on to win in a wild one. 61-59. The first state championship for the Magi since 1999. Yeah, Minot's coach, Dean Winchesky, said he thought that thing was going in. I think everybody in the gym thought that might go in. Great ending, great championship for the Magi. Oh, 15 years of working as a little kid and just being with the family is it's awesome to bring one back for your city, which the crazy support we get, so. We did a great job of keeping out of the middle of the paint, and we did a great job of rebounding. I'm extremely proud of our guys. All right, well, that's a look at the State A's in North Dakota. Later, we're going to peek at the North Dakota Boy, Boys B Tournament. But up next, we'll take a look at the girls' tournaments from South Dakota. Stay with us. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And welcome back. Well, it's time now to take a look back at the Girls State Tournaments in South Dakota. We start, Jason, with the Class AA. Yeah, the thing that's shocking here, the first round, the number two and three seed lost. So in the semifinals, you've got a couple unlikely teams, Harrisburg and Sioux Falls, Washington. And Washington finds themselves able to defend their title against a team with just one loss on the air. That one loss came to the Warriors and we had a rematch. Yeah, they get another crack at O'Gorman. Everybody's favorite coming into the tournament. Frost Arena, side of the double-A title game. Jessica Maris misses. Katie Messler there for the putback. First buckets in over two and a half minutes of game time there. Yeah, a little slow start, but O'Gorman got it going. They had an 11 to two lead at the end of the first quarter. This is the only hoop of that first quarter for Washington. Sydney Arrington, the and one after being down 11 to early. The Warriors tied it at 18 at the half. OG answers with a big third quarter. That included a lot of that high low passing out of the post. Messler to Maris for two inside. Fourth quarter now. Not a replay there, folks. Exactly the same thing. Messler feeding Maris on the low post. That was tough to stop, but what the Warriors did was got that outside shot going, and you see Kelsey Kearney with a big three-pointer to give Washington the first lead late in the game, 40-37. to 37. Under a minute now, Kate Cartwright ties it up with that big three right there, 40 apiece at that point. Now just 40 seconds remaining. Madison Austin heads to the line for the one-and-one, one, hits the first, Misses the second. But look at this. A huge rebound. rebound huge by rebound. Good hope. Good hope. And she's fouled. She hit both free throws. Warriors up 43 40 with still 40 seconds on the clock. After a series of fouls, just 2.8 left. OG down two. Sid Arrington hits a free throw, making it a three point game. O'Gorman would get one last shot to tie it up, but the ball rolls away, and the Warriors are back to back state champs. Jason. Not a lot of people saw this coming. Not a lot at all, especially when O'Gorman had that big lead in the third, late in the third quarter. Washington put up a 22-point fourth quarter to get themselves back in this game, and uh, it's just amazing what they did in that last 40 seconds to keep their poise. A couple of juniors doing their job to keep Washington in it. And our kids, like we said, we had to learn day by day, week by week. you got to show up and compete every single night. And uh, that tough schedule that we battled through all year long was something I think that really paid off for us tonight. I mean, it means so much more just because um, I get to be the one that uh, contributes and helps out my teammates instead of just being on the bench cheering. I mean, although that's a lot of fun still. <laughs> In the fourth, we all lean on each other and just talk the whole time. The coaches are holding us up, and we just had to be confident the whole entire game. Anything could happen is right. All right, let's move on to the Class A girls tournament now. And uh, this one took place in Watertown. 
Yeah, this one, no surprises as far as who made it to the finals. Elk Point Jefferson, maybe a little bit of an upset. We had a couple overtime games in the bracket, but uh, it was all set up to see if the Cavaliers could win three titles in their last four years. Okay, let's take a look right now at St. Thomas Moore and uh, Elk Point Jefferson, Alexis Swedland doing what she does right there. Yeah, you know what? She didn't have a huge point game in this uh, last final game, but a great tournament for her. But they had to deal with Mackenzie Menenga, a great player, a junior for Elk Point Jefferson, who had a, a great night on her own. Swedland can do it inside as well, gets the layup in transition there. Back for Elk Point Jefferson now, Peyton Donnelly to Morgan Flynn. She knocks down the jumper. Yeah, it was uh, trying to stay in that game was hard, but St. Thomas Moore, just too many good players. Look at the passing that they can do to create offense. Uh, St. Thomas Moore rolls in this one, and uh, another championship. This is back-to-back -back ones for the Cavs, and uh, what a great story and great accomplishment for Rapid City, St. Thomas Moore. Oh, this is a great feeling. You know, um, it being our third state championship in four years is just an honor to be a part of it. And I can't wait. I can't. I'm so excited for this team. We know coming in that these teams at the state tournament are going to be really good offensively, you know. And that's just something that we really put our focus on is preparing defensively because that's something we can control every game. Uh, you know, it's hard to describe what uh, what I'm feeling. I'm, I'm just so proud of the girls and the effort that they put in all year. And, uh, you know, to have a payoff this way and, and be able to defend the state championship, that's very, very, uh, you know, I, I just don't know, it's very, I'm very, very proud of what they've done. Certainly well-deserved, some very talented players at St. Thomas More. Moving to the Class B bracket now, uh, Sully Buttes was the, the number one seed. Ethan, though, came in undefeated on the year, including a win over Sully yeah. Buttes. So we're going to find out something in the championship yeah, game Yeah, both these two teams marched their way to the title game, and this would set up what would be an interesting defensive battle. And uh, this is taking place in Huron. Uh, the Rustlers got off to a good start. Layup by Janae Gustafson. Ethan built a 13-4 lead in the second quarter. Sully Buttes counters with Chloe Lamb. She gets the three from the quarter. Uh, still a six-point lead, though, at that point for Ethan. Yeah, then Ellie Hone comes back, and some great passing on this team. You see Carly Gustafson feed Ellie Hone, and Rachel Hawkins again to Darby Gustafson on the cut to the hoop. So passing, a key for this Rustler team. They've done it all year with passing and defense. Look at the almost like a no-look pass right to the hoop. He put up uh, 20 to 13. You knew Sully Buttes would come back, and they did. It's Lamb, the steal, the behind-the-back dribble, uh, and the finish. Chargers led. 25-23 in the third quarter. Yeah, you, she's such a great athlete. You see her with the controlling of the ball all the way down the, the court. She and Raquel Wenches were such a big part of this team. Under two minutes, tied up. Ethan gets two off the inbound play. Ellie Hone, uh, Sully Beach tries to answer, but a turnover proves costly here. Yeah, late in the game, they had a chance to at least get it back tied up, and from then on, it just kind of spun out of control. They had one last shot, and oh, just a few inches off. That would have put it into overtime, but Ethan, deserving of another title, or a, a title in an undefeated season, and uh, we caught up with Tom Young right at the end of the game. And you know, you get to this stage, every possession is really valued, and they took their time with the basketball, and we took our time with the basketball, and. And it was just kind of like a battle, and, and somehow we just came out at the very end. All right, so a great run for those three teams. Congratulations to all three South Dakota girls basketball champions. Uh, more previews to come for the South Dakota boys and the North Dakota Class B boys. But next, we're going to bring you the story of Cole Benson, who had to spend part of middle school in a wheelchair and is now a force in AA basketball. That's next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by... AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Well, it's time to take a quick look at the upcoming tournaments this weekend. We don't have time to do complete previews justice today, so be sure to check out our website, midcosn.com, and click on the blog to get much more detailed previews yes. of these four state tournaments for this weekend. But real quickly, Jason, first things in South Dakota, what's one of the big storylines going in this weekend? Uh, I think there are a couple. One in AA, you've got the Denny uh, Sanford Premier Center. First time this building has been used for a state tournament. How will that affect the field? Mm -hmm. uh, in the A's, you've got a seven-footer playing in, the game, in these games out of Little Wound. It'll be fun to watch. And in the B's, you've got a 25-point-per-game scorer who's uh, gone – 
virtually unnoticed this year in Lorenzo Williams. So three big stories to watch. How about North Dakota? What do you expect to see out of that tournament in Bismarck? I think those top four seeds, the ones that they seeded, uh, are really good. And I, I hope those four advance to the semifinals, which will set up one of the best Fridays of basketball we've seen in North Dakota class be in a long time. All right, seriously, go to the website, midcoetzin.com. Much more detail Much to more. be had on, on just about every matchup, especially in that first round. So check that out for us. Uh, and you'll get a lot more out of that preview part. All right, well, stay tuned. Coming up next, we've got a great story about a kid out of Sioux Falls, Washington, who went from maybe never playing again to becoming one of the best players in the state of South Dakota. That story, coming up next. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. Well, Sioux Falls, Washington comes into this weekend's South Dakota AA Boys Basketball Tournament as the number one seed. And the Warriors are led in part by a big man that is having an outstanding season. Yeah, but not the big man you might be thinking of. This big man is happy to be playing basketball, happy to be part of that Warrior team, because a few years ago, there's a chance he might not be playing at all. Here's Tom Neiman with more. To see him moving around now, you would never know that just a few years ago, Cole Benson could hardly move at all. I found out in seventh grade, after the basketball season, I, after every practice and stuff, I'd just come home and it'd be really painful on my knees and it'd be hard to walk and I was just sore all the time. In 2009, when the pain became too much, he had it checked out and found out that he had a condition in which the joints in his knees were literally falling apart. Yeah, it's, it's called osteochondritis desiccans, and it's where you have dead, I had dead bone on my condyles, I think they're called, and my right was worse, so they went in and scraped my bone and pinned it back. So between the knock knees and the growth plate problems and the dead tissue at the end of his leg bones, things were not looking good. In January of 2010, he had surgery at Mayo Clinic. He had that plate and the screws inserted and the dead bone scraped away and the ligaments put back where they were supposed to be. And then he had to wait. I was in a wheelchair at school for, for a while. And like, I was on crutches for six months without putting any weight on it, just so that it wouldn't, it just have time to heal. Two years of not knowing whether he would be able to play basketball or anything else in his high school days. Eventually the screws and the plate came out and the leg bones got healthier and he was growing again like a normal teenager. He started rehabilitation, still not sure if he would ever get back into competitive sports. I thought he might be done with, with basketball and, and he's a really good tennis player and thought he might have to give all that up. But during his freshman year, he started to play a little basketball and then a little tennis and he got bolder and a little more steady on his new knees. I always kind of remember my, my leg was kind of shaking so, I don't know, I just, I don't know what kind of I was supposed to feel with it all. I was just nervous too and everything. I didn't know how it would go. Well, about this time, Craig Nelson took over as head coach at Washington. And he first saw Cole when he came out for his sophomore season. You know, I just saw a long, lanky, young athlete who, who was skilled, but hadn't quite filled out into his body, hadn't quite you know, developed fully his game and things like that. Really wasn't aware of his injury until at least a couple weeks into, in, into open gyms or into the season when we really got to talking because he's just a kid who would play through it and you know, just, just wouldn't even mention it. But as things wore on, you, you got to know him a little bit better, you realized it was a pretty serious injury uh, that he had when he was young. All right, there is more good news for Cole Benson. That's a great story from Tom Neiman, by the way. But it, it appears that college basketball may very well be in his future as well. Uh, Coach Nelson tells us NSIC schools, NAI schools have expressed interest, but a lot of them want to see how he does in the state tournament. Yeah, first. it's going to be a big week for Cole Benson. And, uh, he, you know, he kind of got noticed late in the game. He was a little mm -hmm. under the radar, didn't start playing again until he was a freshman. He was on the JV squad most of last year, really took advantage when he started taking a leadership role. About in January of this year, he started taking over games and people started opening their eyes. Well, we certainly wish him well going forward this weekend at the state tournament. Speaking of state tournaments, we've got four championship picks to make, including that South Dakota AA. Will the Warriors be one of them? We'll find out when we come back. 
Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by AE Tech Electrical Training Center in Rapid City. Varsity Sports on Midco Sports Network is presented by Shields. And welcome back. We wrap things up tonight again with another round of High School Hoops Pick'em where it's all about the winners and again, championship picks at stake here. Two points for those. You're going to need all of them. And I need them. Yeah. So let's get Down to it three. right now. Down three. Uh, One, week to one go. tournament to talk about in North Dakota, of course, the State B. Who you got? I think rugby ends up taking the taking the nets down and uh, avenging a loss on the way, beating Fargo Oak Grove. I got to go with the senior experience. I like four wins, been a walk-in. I think this team has been on the cusp of a championship, just not been able to get over the hump. I think they get it done this time uh, at the State B Tournament. All right, South Dakota now, three to go, double A. It's hard to beat a team four times in a year, but I think that's what's going to happen. Washington is going to take out Lincoln in the finals once again and be able to take a title home. I like Washington as well. They've answered the call all year. I think the Warriors get it done and get that state title, completing the double A sweep. How about that? Yep, uh, South perfect. Dakota boys, now. I think Del Rapids is a team you have to keep your eye on. I think they avenge a loss uh, to Aberdeen Ron Colley in the finals. Give me the Warriors. I'm going to go a little bit farther out on the limb. I'm going to go to the same side of the bracket. I like St. Thomas Moore, the seventh Ooh. seed. I think the Cavaliers are getting hot. They play a really difficult schedule. They do. They're healthy now. Yeah. They're playing in Rapid City. I like St. Thomas Moore to get the championship as the seven seed. Whoa! Nine losses. Wow. All right, finally, how, how about the South Dakota boys? I need to pick to, to I, catch up. So. I'm going to go with Wolsey Westington. I think you're going to find out just how good Lorenzo Williamson is. He's about five points better than the next best scorer in this class. No argument from here. Uh, the the Wolsey Westington undefeated on the year. It's almost laughable that they're a four seed, uh, yeah. but that's based on, obviously, the seeding points. But I think Wolsey Westington gets the state B title. All right, All right well, that's going to do it for us. For Jason Andera, I'm Jay Elson. Enjoy the games, everybody. We'll be back here to recap all the action for you next week on Varsity Sports.